Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky of the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast we'll be reviewing the structure and function of the capillaries. The microscopic thin-walled capillaries are the smallest blood vessels, numbering around 20 billion, and form elaborate interwoven networks of vessels among the body's tissues and cells. They branch extensively and have a vast amount of surface area, which enhances their functions of gas, nutrient, and waste exchange between the blood and the interstitial fluid. The capillaries are also known as exchange vessels due to this primary function. The capillaries form the body's microcirculation, which consists of the meta-arterioles, the capillaries, and a post-capillary venule, which drains the blood out of the capillary. The number and density of capillaries in the body's tissues increases in tissues that are metabolically very active and require more oxygen and nutrients, such as the muscles, nerves, brain, liver, and kidneys. Tissues that have lower metabolic demands, like the tendons and ligaments, don't have many capillaries. Some tissues don't have any capillaries at all, such as the epithelia that lines and covers organs, cartilage, and the cornea and lens of the eye. The capillary wall is significantly reduced. They don't have either a tunica externa or a tunica media. They consist of just one layer of endothelial cells and a basement membrane, which helps them immensely in their exchange function. Plus, their high degree of branching and extensive surface area allows them to rapidly exchange substances between the blood and the surrounding interstitial fluid. A meta-arterial gives rise to 10 to 100 capillaries that form the capillary bed. The path of blood flow in a capillary bed is as follows. Blood flows out of an arterial, specifically a meta-arterial, and into the capillaries, and then into a venule, specifically a post-capillary venule. The pre-capillary sphincters, located between the arterial, specifically the meta-arterials and the capillary, regulates the blood flow into the capillary bed. When the sphincters are relaxed, as shown here in the diagram, they open to allow blood to flow into the capillaries. When they contract, they close or partially close to slow down or stop blood flow into the capillaries. There is a cycle of alternating contraction and relaxation of the meta-arterials and the precapillary sphincters called vasomotion which happens five to ten times every minute. At any moment in time, about one quarter of the capillaries in the bed have blood flowing through them. As the meta-arterial enters into the capillary bed, it loses its smooth muscle and is known as the thoroughfare channel. This vessel acts like a bypass around the capillary bed, allowing blood to flow directly from the arterial into the venule. There are three different types of capillaries, continuous, fenestrated, and sinusoids. The most common type of capillary is the continuous capillary. They're located in the skin, the muscle, the lungs, the brain, and the spinal cord. They're called continuous because the endothelial cell's plasma membrane wraps around the capillary bed as a continuous tube. The only spaces in the capillary are intercellular clefts located between adjacent endothelial cells. They form little gaps that partially separate each of the endothelial cells. The fenestrated capillaries contain endothelial cells whose plasma membranes contain small pores called fenestrations. They also have intercellular clefts between their endothelial cells. 
These capillaries are located in the endocrine glands, the kidneys, the villi of the small intestine, the choroid plexuses in the brain, and the ciliary processes of the eyes. You can see the fenestrations, these pores within the endothelial membranes, give them a Swiss cheese-like appearance. The sinusoids have a larger diameter than the other two capillaries and have very large fenestrations. Their basement membranes are incomplete or lacking and have wider intercellular clefts. These larger spaces allow bigger molecules like proteins and also blood cells to move from tissues into the blood. Sinusoids are found in the red bone marrow, the liver, the spleen, the parathyroid gland, adrenal gland, and the anterior pituitary gland. Blood can also flow from one capillary bed directly into another through special vessels called portal veins, which are part of a portal system. These circulation systems are named after the second capillary bed they are supplying. For example, the liver's portal system is called the hepatic portal circulation. 